Hey everybody, Masvid and A4, and today we'll be talking about Sonic RPG, a Flash web series created by Midnight Marin in 2005. I have covered Sonic RPG on the channel quite a bit, but now that the series has finally concluded last year, I think it's time to look back on it one more time, before giving it a proper goodbye. We're going through a 10 episodic adventure, the good, the bad, and everything in between, so let's talk about just that. The episode begins with Sonic the Hedgehog relaxing on the beach enjoying his adventure. But his R&R gets cut short when someone shoots a missile at him. Dr. Eggman appears and declares he's ready to start his brand new legacy. And it all starts with chaos. This chaos doesn't even need the Chaos Emeralds to increase his power level. And with that, it's time to get to the RPG in the Sonic RPG. So, the battle mechanics in this series is more or less the same, excluding the final two episodes. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. First, Sonic's moveset. You have your basic melee attack, which is your weakest move with zero drawbacks. You have your magic commands, which cost MP, and your special commands, which cost SP. Sonic's only method of attack is, well, attack. Meanwhile, Chaos over here is allowed to use his entire moveset, so Sonic is getting washed up. And it looks like Dr. Eggman is going to win this time! But wait, Shadow the Hedgehog arrives at the scene. Absolutely revolted about Sonic's performance, Shadow is now up to bat. The Ultimate Life Form has a special move up his sleeve. The space-time warping technique, Chaos Control! And Chaos is now one big drip. Just like in RPG fashion, when you've defeated an enemy, you gain growth and experience points. Sonic learns the magic skill Healer, and Shadow learns the magic skill Energy Beam. Once the battle is over, the hedgehogs are questioning what Eggman's angle is, and how he even managed to get a hold of Chaos again. Eggman monologues stating that this was a part of his latest plan. Chaos was a fake he used to extract both the DNA and battle data of Sonic and Shadow. Not only that, Eggman must be the best crane game player of all time, because he always manages to snatch Chaos Emeralds out of people's bare hands. How does he do it? Eggman is trying to replicate the experiments his grandfather Gerald Robotnik did 50 years ago. Sonic is thinking that Doc is a little sus and that he might have the rest of the Chaos Emeralds. So while our hero goes after him, Shadow heads off to Angel Island to find the Guardian, Knuckles the Echidna. Upon arriving at the Emerald Altar, Knuckles is nowhere to be seen. When Shadow is about to help himself with the Master Emerald, Knuckles shows up questioning why the Hedgehog is even here in the first place. Since both of these characters are short-tempered and will resort to violence, I guess it's time for an RPG battle. Knuckles actually swings first in this fight, but now it's Shadow's time. Since Eggman took the Emerald away from Shadow, he no longer has access to Chaos Control, so the only options you're left with is Attack and Energy Beam. Shadow is getting carried, so Knuckles made quick work of him. After bashing heads with each other, they finally realize, oh, we're on the same side. So they make a break for the Death Egg together with the Master Emerald. Cutting back to Dr. Eggman, he has managed to surpass his grandfather's legacy by making the true ultimate life form. Before the experiment is complete, here's Sonic! Eggman is baffled on how Sonic got up to the Death Eggs, as everyone in this franchise can fly but him. However, Sonic got up here using his super form. Eggman tells the audience that there was an incident with the Master Emerald in the past, which is why Sonic can use the form at will. But alas, it is time for another RPG battle. Sonic must fight the Sonic 3 final boss, but it has legs! This is the first fight in the series that isn't scripted, so you can a game over here. But fear not, because Sonic now has access to his special skills! I would stay in Sonic's base form until he cannot tank another hit. Then it's time to transform! Super Sonic has his own health bar. He is also tankier than his base form. This battle's pretty easy and Sonic comes out on top. We get interrupted by a voice saying the experiment is complete. Eggman begins to gloat that the being created will be unstoppable. A large tremor shakes the very core of the Death Egg, and out of nowhere, some being slams Sonic right to the ground. In front of him stands a black, mysterious hedgehog. Shadow and Knuckles finally catch up as well. This is Eggman's latest and greatest creation that will help him conquer the world! Sano! 
Well, his own creation, Sano, really told like Ben, You don't have enough gym badges to train me! Went to the name raider and changed his name to Silkadoom! Silkadoom the Hedgehog. And, um, that's not a good sign, guys. You know what I think? I think that hedgehog's gonna kill everybody! Eggman uses his big brain for once, tells everybody in that very room to go to hell, and banishes them to the Shadow Realm. And that is the end of episode one. Now, this is a great opening episode because it lays down all the groundwork in a fluid manner. Just the lead up to the Death Egg, how Silkadoom was born, and the way Eggman just banished all of them into another dimension. That always freaked me out when I was younger, and I, I like it. Sonic RPG Episode 2. We see Silkadoom the Hedgehog talking to a mysterious individual. They mention an item called a Holy Sapphire, which happens to hold tremendous power, and the duo wants it for themselves. As they are about to depart, they get interrupted by a loud noise, so Silkadoom stays behind to deal with it while this other individual takes off. Elsewhere, a confused Sonic wakes up, pondering where in the world he is. Standing in front of him is the once-was Emperor of the Light Half of Herbegaton. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Knights! You know what? Herbegaton? Herbegaton. Herbegaton. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just stick with that. Herbegaton is a land where two distinct kingdoms reign without conflict. That is until the day Sonic and company fell from the sky. Rila, the Emperor of the Dark Side, teamed up with Silkadoom, and Knights teamed up with the others, aka Knuckles and Shadow. A battle happened, and well, Team Knights got clapped. I would have loved to see the scramble of this fight. Everyone just being confused about how they got here and what's going on, and then there's violence! Knights bring Sonic up to speed about what happened and suggests that they should get the Sapphire to turn the tables in this war with the Dark Side. And with that, Sonic and Knights take off to the temple. Upon reaching said temple, a beam of light blocks their way. A guardian appears, defending the gemstone, because of course there is one. Knights explains to the guardian that the balance of the land is at stake, so they need the sapphire, but the guardian thinks the duo's here to take it under selfish intentions. Come on, Ristar, Rystar, whatever the freak your name is, give us a gemstone! A clash of morality. So it's time for an RPG battle. Another scripted fight where you can't lose, at least, I don't think you can. It's a 2v1 battle with some epic music. Sonic has access to his super form, so you can go ahead and transform! I see no reason not to go all out, and when you do become super, this Guardian becomes a joke. He won't even put up a fight. After the battle, the Guardian thinks they're at a standstill, which is insane to me. Sir, if we were the bad guys, your life would be over. But the bad guys do show up. Well, just one of them. Rila comes out of nowhere and sucker punches the Guardian. Rila wouldn't be able to steal a sapphire from right under our noses, right? Oh. And with that, it's time to go Super Sonic Racing. We can't let that menace keep the gemstone. Rila can't outrun the duo, so upon landing, Sonic decides to take the fight to Rila all by himself, while Knights defends the gemstone. Sonic and Rila exchange a few words with each other, and Rila thinks this fake super form can't do jack diddly squat. And now, it's game time. It's time for an RPG battle. This fight is also scripted, where Sonic and Rila trade blows. Super Sonic Dash vs. the Rila Explosion. Then Rila thinks to himself, this episode is taking way too long, and says, screw this, I'm gonna crit you like Pokemon hacks. And then he just leaves? You have a passed out Sonic the Hedgehog on the floor and you leave? In the opposite direction of the Sapphire, no less? Hello? Did you forget your mission? Anyways, moments pass and Knuckles wakes up a beaten up Sonic the Hedgehog and tells him that Shadow went to go fight Silkadoom all alone. We also learn that the Master Emerald got left behind on the Death Egg after everyone got sucked into the Hell Dimension. Way to go, Knucklehead! Knights catches up to Sonic and Knuckles and has successfully harnessed the power of the Holy Sapphire. With this new power, there's a chance Knights might be strong enough to take out Riala and Silkadoom. 
Knuckles decides he does not want to join the castle raid because he would rather find a way home. You know what? Makes sense. And I do kind of like how this is very in character. In a way, it's kind of like Sonic X, you know? How Knuckles and friends... Knuckles and friends... Sonic and friends they get teleported to Earth. And Knuckles' main priority is to find a way home. And we learn that the insect at the beginning of the episode happened to be Shadow. I wonder how he's faring against Silk. <laughs> And that's the end of the episode. Silka Doom the Hedgehog. I'm going out on a limb here and saying that Silka Doom is the coolest fan made Sonic OC of all time. Better than Nazo. Better than Aeon. Better than Shattuck. And I dare say, even better than Cold Steel. He's also not your basic full on Sonic recolor either. His design is actually really nice. He has Sonic shoes, gloves, arms, and belly. But his shoes are black compared to Sonic's red. His fur and skin tone are almost exactly the same as Shadow's. He also has Shadow's head quills, but instead of red stripes, he has blue. Everything design-wise complements Silka Doom so well, and you can see Sonic and Shadow's features without them clashing with each other. It's the perfect blend. But, can we talk about how this guy is an actual behemoth? In episode 1, this guy is born. He literally comes out of the womb. And what does he do? He just folds Sonic into a lawn chair. Upon arrival! No big deal. Violence! Sonic got beat down so bad, he was unconscious for an entire week after they got sent to this dimension. And zero build up to betrayal. He just immediately tells Eggman to screw off and he's not his real dad. And was most likely going to kill everybody! My only issue with this episode is the dialogue. The font used for this episode is more so dark, and the text box where the dialogue is in for the font is black. They kind of blend in together and it's just hard to read. It's a bit hard on the eyes. But right now, hands are about to be thrown. Sonic RPG, episode three. Knights and Sonic make it into Realis Castle, but it's pitch black in there. Unfortunately, we ran out of TM70s, so Sonic goes super instead to create light! And Rila pops in with a failed sneak attack. Because Shadow is a main priority for this mission, Knight stays behind while Super Sonic speeds ahead. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like people shouldn't really announce their ambush attack out loud when your opponent has their guard down. Because Silker Doom hears Sonic coming and just kicks a super form out of him. No big deal. Sonic demands where Shadow is, and Silka Doom tells him he hasn't seen him since he kicked him somewhere. That's kind of messed up. Silka Doom goes on to tell Sonic that he can't win. But... Maybe they both can. Shadow makes his reappearance. A 2v1 Hedgehog Brawl. And it's time for an RPG battle. Super Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog versus Silka Doom the Hedgehog. Super Sonic only has one move in his arsenal, which is his Super Sonic Dash. Shadow is still the same as when he fought Knuckles in Episode 1. No Chaos Emerald here, so no Chaos Control. And, uh, Silka Doom? Yeah, he's just, he's just kind of chilling there. Not really swinging back, but he's not doing nothing. He is using what I like to call his signature move, not best, his signature move, Osmos. A move that drains his opponent's MP. Well then, if he's just gonna stand there and not attack us, you might as well finish him off and win. Quick, somebody call an ambulance, but not for me. They're not done yet. From a miraculous turn of events, our duo gets revived. Confused by what happened, Shadow decides now is the time to finish Silka Doom off. But Sonic has other plans.
because he doesn't think they can win in their current state. So he grabs Shadow against his own will and flees. Cutting back to Knights, we learn that Knights became a white mage and that Sapphire's power revived the hedgehogs. And Rila wants that power for himself. So it's time for another RPG battle. Knights vs. Rila. Light vs. Dark. Rila has the same attacks when he fought Supersonic in Episode 2. And now we get introduced to Knight's moveset! Actually, we did get introduced to it in Episode 2, but I'm gonna talk about it right now. He has your basic melee attack, and he also has the magic skill, Star Rain. The battle is that he stands still. However, with the power of the Sapphire, Knight's gains access to the Overdrive skill, Judgment Knight. If you don't use this move after Rila's monologue, he will kill you. But we are going to turn the tables on him. How do you like that, Rila? The moon pissed on you, you idiot! Rila is on his knees, begging for his life. But he is too much of a menace to be left alive. As Knights is about to finish him off, Supersonic yells at Knights to scram since they're being tailed by an angry Silky Doom. And they get away. While escaping the Dark Castle, the trio crash into Knuckles. Timing! Shadow is very pissed off about the retreat, but Sonic tries to tell him the plan was to save Shadow and nothing more. But there's no time to dwell on the past. What's done is done. The group decides that their best chance to stay alive is to split up Silkadoom and Rila and somehow fight them individually. Not a bad plan if I do say so myself, but how in the world are they going to manage that? But, what the gang needs now is rest, so Knights knows a cavern nearby on the dark side where Rila can't find them. Shadow goes off to do his own thing, since he's the lone wolf type. After a few hours of resting, Sonic and friends get ambushed by the Ancient Beast and some random gargoyle. There's no time to rest, so our heroes must fight the power if they want to leave this cavern alive. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Actually, it's one of my favorite ones. With an ongoing war between the light and dark side, they do need their mini skirmishes here and there to get tension going. And it was great to finally see Silkadoom in action and how much of a menace he truly is. Sonic RPG Episode 4, and it's time to start with an RPG battle. Super Sonic, Knights and Knuckles versus Random Gargoyle and the Ancient Beast. Super Sonic still has his bare bones basic Super Sonic Dash, but at least the animation changes every episode. Knights is the same as in Episode 3 against Rila. This is our first time playing as Knuckles. But I won't lie to you, I don't know what his magic options are because he's the only character we currently have with SP. So of course, I'll be mashing Thunder Punch! Unless you're trying to throw the battle, you cannot die in this first phase. But no matter what you do, the Gargoyle will get off its attack before you kill it. Now we are left with the Ancient Beast who retreats in this red hole, and our heroes give chase. The red hole sends the party in some bottomless cavern. Knights creates a platform for everyone to have a foothold. The Beast is using his current terrain to its advantage, which means Sonic and company are in danger. Shadow can no longer sense Sonic's energy and teleports to his last known location. He also notices a hole and jumps in to follow suit just in the nick of time. Now, it's Shadow versus the Ancient Beast. Since the monster is airborne, only Shadow's energy beam can dish out damage, but he only has enough MP to fire off one, and one isn't enough. The Ancient Beast is ready to finish this, so it begins a charge's charge shot! Not a charge shot! If you just let him go charge the full power like in Dragon Ball, you will die. And limits are meant to be broken. You have to decide to kill him, and Shadow fires off another energy beam. And I guess you can say that Ancient Beast is now ancient history. A huge party level up. Shadow gets a magical increase, Supersonic learns an extra attack, Knights levels up, and Knuckles, he gains nothing! After the battle, Knuckles is in bad shape. Knights is immune to the secondary effects of black magic, and well, Supersonic repels those effects naturally. The only way to cure Knuckles is to get him holy water, which is found in Knight's castle on the light side of the world. 
Knights protects Knuckles while Sonic decides to go to the castle on his own since he's the fastest thing alive. Shadow wanted to tag along to grab the holy water together, but Sonic convinces him to help Knights protect Knuckles in case they get ambushed again. And Shadow happens to go along with that plan. Meanwhile, the bad guys know Sonic and friends survived the ambush because Silkadoom can still sense their energies. However, he does notice one of the hedgehogs is rapidly splitting off the group. Silkadoom orders Rila to wait at the castle while he intercepts. And thus, Super Sonic runs into a angry Silkadoom. And another fight is about to go down. And that's the end of episode 4! So, uh... This episode introduced voice acting. The acting for the most part is passable at best, but Sonic and that voice do not work at all. And it sounds worse when he gets the pronunciation of the antagonist wrong as well. I'll be back on time. Don't worry. Together we will fight Skeladoom. Bye now. The writing in this episode especially, and a bit of the previous episode, sounds like it got ripped straight out of Shadow the Hedgehog's 2005 video game. Shit, he's gone. How can... how can that be? How can three to four bitches kill the ancient beast? That was the rough, edgy phase of the series for sure, and it does not fit the characters at all. Fortunately, the writing does get better from here. Sound complaints aside, I do think the episode was alright. Our heroes did get a chance to fight more opponents, and more stakes got raised because Knuckles got cursed. They need everyone at the bare minimum to be in tip-top fighting shape to at LEAST stand a chance against Silkadoom and Rila in case they attack our heroes again. Cause that's all they care about right now, killing the good guys. Shadow also gets a really great moment too that managed to save everyone. No gemstone or super form to get carried with either. That's our ultimate life form. Sonic RPG Episode 5, Taking the Fight Alone. Our episode kicks off with an ill-timed encounter with Silkadoom. Sonic has no time to fight because his friend's life is at stake, and Silkadoom could not care any less. Now, I want to take this time to talk about Silkadoom the Hedgehog. So he's the battle data combo between Sonic and Shadow, right? Which automatically makes him super powerful. In Episode 1, he immediately awakens into the world and folds Sonic into a lawn chair. In Episode 2, when Sonic was MIA for a week, both Silkadoom and Rila managed to dumpster Shadow, Knuckles, and Knights at the same time. In Episode 3, Shadow challenged Silkadoom himself and literally got his teeth kicked in. Later in that episode, Super Sonic and Shadow teamed up together to fight Silkadoom, but Silkadoom made both of them eat dirt. But here is the issue for that last fight. Even after winning, Silkadoom got very weak. Why is that? And in this episode, Super Sonic manages to beat Silkadoom. But wait, that's kinda odd. Super Sonic lost to Real on Episode 2. Yet we know Silkadoom exceeds Riala's strength by a lot. All of this raises quite a few question marks about power scaling. But hey, I've got two answers for you. One being my own suggestive conclusion, and one being a confirmation from Midnight Marin himself. My own conclusion is that Silkadoom himself is very unstable. Because he was created with Shadow and Sonic battle DNA, he has a ton of power surging within him. When Sonic fought Chaos Zero, he NEVER went into a super form, assuming the only battle data Eggman extracted was from that only encounter. So on paper, Silkadoom the Hedgehog equals Sonic plus Shadow plus Chaos Emerald Energy, because he was created using the Chaos Emerald's power. In Episode 3, not only did Silkadoom have to fight both Hedgehogs at the same time, now he has to deal with a Super Sonic, albeit a fake super form. Silkadoom's magical apocalypse, I think that's how you pronounce that, did take out Super Sonic as Shadow in one hit. However, expending that much energy in one singular attack weakened his body, meaning he's now unstable anytime he uses way too much power. The official answer from the creator himself to Silkadoom's power inconsistencies, since he does lose to Super Sonic here, is. I'll keep it a secret for now since it does get foreshadowed. <laughs> in Episode 8, and revealed in Episode 9. But let's just say for now he's pulling a Son Goku, and is holding back for the time being. With a knocked down and weakened Silkadoom, Sonic rushes to Knight's castle. Upon arriving at the castle, we get some dungeon crawling, so you better get those arrow keys ready to move around, and the shift button to sprint! 
This dungeon is not complicated at all. You need three keys located somewhere in the castle. Along the way, you will run into two RPG encounters. For the first battle, you're against a flying creature. You can beat it easily in Sonic's base form. No sweat! For the second battle, it will be at 2 versus 1. You fight some ice guy and some random floating knight. This encounter, you want to activate your super form, and if you spam your supersonic dash, the battle will be won. After collecting the three keys and opening the locked door, it's time for an RPG battle. The boss of this episode, Draga. I won't lie to you guys, I don't recognize any of these enemy sprites, so I don't know their game's origins. Forgive me. But it is kind of weird how there's monsters roaming around in Knights' castle. Isn't this the light side? Maybe they're attacking because Knights isn't present? Or maybe because of the imbalance of the world currently? Who knows, but we have enemies to defeat. This fight will be a butt clencher. You must use all of your resources to a T or else you are a goner. For this fight, I like to stay in Sonic's base form and to consistently chip away on this boss's HP until your own HP is below 110. At that critical moment is when you go for the magic skill healer for a full restore. You rinse and repeat for as long as you possibly can. Once you're out of MP, your back is against the wall. And that's when it's your time to transform! After leveling up in Episode 4, Super Sonic has a new skill. Extra! Or what I like to call, the BIG BANG ATTACK! Keep on trading blows and there's nothing left but victory. Sonic reaches level 15, now gains access to the Spin Dash and Holy Water Gets! And that's the end of the episode. Overall, a good one. Sonic now has a tolerable voice, and we finally moved away from the drawings, and the series is fully in sprite form. And I love me some sprite animations and sprite work in general, so I greatly appreciate this change. Sonic RPG Episode 6 What is this? We're not in her Herbegatan anymore. We're back on Sonic's world! Wait a minute. I can say Mobius now! We're back on Mobius! You hear that, Sega? You can't stop me! I'll call it Mobius as much as I want to! Miles Tails Prower is taking a spin on the Tornado, pondering where everyone is, because he hasn't seen Sonic and Knuckles in a while. Flying in front of him is the Death Egg. Maybe Eggman took the Master Emerald since it's missing from Angel Island. With that, our two-tailed fox beelines to the Flying Fortress. Eggman, currently, is searching for the Chaos Emeralds, but he gets interrupted by the alarm because someone is breaking inside the Death Egg. In retaliation, he sends out Mega Sonic, not the SMBZ version. The robot blocks Tails' path, and it's time for an RPG battle. Mega Sonic is an easy fight. He's weak to lightning skills, and he'll pull an Andross on you if he's low on HP. The Kamikaze Attack. Make sure you're on high on HP when he's about to blows up, and the battle will be won. After Tails punts Mecha Sonic's head off, he finds Eggman with the Master Emerald and demands it gets handed over to him immediately. But the Doctor won't roll over for a fox that easily. Now it's time for an RPG battle. This battle is a doozy. I would argue either this episode or episode 10 being the hardest fight in the series. The key to victory this time is all about the Master Emerald, which Eggman uses against you. In case you didn't notice, Tails' tornado transformed into the Cyclone, a walking battle mech from Adventure 2. And he has quite the interesting moveset. For his regular attack, he shoots one charge shot from his Cyclone. All of his magic skills aren't even tied to the Cyclone. Tails has access to Fire, a fire-based skill. Purple Vortex, a lightning-based skill. Healer, which, you know, heals you. Protect. Raises your defenses, which is a move that you should definitely use turn one. And lastly, Scan, to gain vital info about the enemy. Scan is not needed on repeated playthroughs, since the weaknesses for both enemies stay the same. Lastly are the special skills that do take advantage of the Cyclone. Tails gets the Triple Shot, a Charge Shot times three! Eggman will attack you with missiles and a Flamethrower. His deadliest attack is the Master Emerald Beam! It takes two turns to charge up the Emerald's power. During the charge, some of Eggman's armor goes down. Now is the opportunity to fire off your triple shots or your stronger magic skills to deal the most amount of damage. When you're feeling spicy, Tails has another special attack. His most expensive, yet destructive move. The Kamehameha Wave! G-Beam! <laughs>
Meanwhile, back in her Beckitan, Silkadoom is still passed out after his beating. And what does he dream of? Himself getting his ass beat again! Humiliated, his rage towards Sonic begins to grow deeper. While Knights is protecting Knuckles, Rila appears demanding for the Sapphire. Knights is at a disadvantage here because he has to guard Knuckles and can't fight at full strength knowing his friend is in danger. Fortunately, Shadow was nearby and kept the promise he made to Sonic and the fight is about to go down. That's the end of the episode! Really nice to have an episode focused around Mobius because it was stated that the Master Emerald did get left behind on the Death Egg. And man oh man, it sure is nice to see Tails in character perfectly willing to fight Eggman alone, even when he has the Master Emerald. Sonic RPG Episode 7 It's time for an RPG battle! Knights and Shadow the Hedgehog vs. Rila. Shadow's kit is the exact same in Episode 4. However, he now has access to Chaos Spear and the Yellow Dash. Spear. The special meter has a different UI this time, and those two moves utilize it. Knights has the same kit as he did in Episode 3, a melee attack, and Star Rain. <laughs> One magic skill that got a nice buff is Healer. So let's say Knights uses a heal, okay? The recovery energy pours on the caster, like the rain, and some of the drops will also fall on their ally. Knights will get most of the health, but Shadow will gain a little health as well, without using any MP for it. When Knights has the bigger health bar, he can be a pseudo white mage, and Shadow can be a lot more aggressive in this battle. Rila only has three moves, with one of them dealing much more damage than the rest. Because Knights has the Holy Sapphire, he still has access to his overdrive. The out of this world technique, Judgment Knight. Where the heavens fight against you, and the moon literally blindsides you! But wait, there's one more attack. Shadow and Knights have a Team Blast! The SP Outbreak. It consumes an entire Overdrive bar, and the power increases with the excess SP Shadow the Hedgehog's got. Let us do it. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> And with that, both Shadow and Knights get a level up! Knowing that he's beat, Rila makes a break for it. This guy has no business being here, and he was threatening Knuckles! So Shadow is having none of that. Running away, you coward! He is an emperor. How pathetic. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, Sonic is dashing through the land at top speeds. But oh? A monster? Eh, Knuckles can wait. This is an RPG after all. The plot will wait for me. It's side quest time! Sonic vs. Rock Beast. Extremely easy fight. 
Sonic the Hedgehog has a brand new move in his base form, the classic Spin Dash. When your HP is low, it's time to transform! Keep that same strategy you used in Episode 5. The extra attack animation is pretty sick here. Super Sonic calls the Big Bang attack and Sonic jams it into the ground! But yeah, a Rockman is kill with our supersonic skill. Speaking of kill, we cut back to Rila's dead body where Sokudum appears just to call him an idiot for leaving the castle. For a chance at revenge, Shadow wants Sokudum right here and right now! Knights think this is madness and that he should hold off for now, but Shadow challenges him anyway. Shadow has gotten a lot stronger since the last time they fought, so maybe, just maybe, he'll be able to defeat him this time. <laughs> As Silkadoom is about to deal the finishing blow, Super Sonic saves the day, just in the nick of time. And he is ticked off. Silkadoom states that Sonic will regret sparing him, because that will be the only chance in his lifetime that he will win. If Sonic is truly serious on fighting him, he needs to go to Realist Castle and bring his A-game. And with that, Silkadoom takes off, leaving Sonic with his friends. What? Come back here! Let him go. He knows you will not give it your all since you are concerned about Knuckles and Shadow. For now, let us turn our attention to our friends. We must bide whatever time we can. <clears throat> so be it. But know this, Knights. That bastard won't leave this dimension alive. You have my word. What a great episode. Fun fact. Episode 7 was the first episode I ever played from this series. It's how I got into it to begin with. One of my favorite things ever, whether it be in media, in a competitive game, or anything really, is getting into a bad situation and turning that situation into a good one. The classic, turning the tables, the Uno reverse card, the no you memento. I love it and it's done here. After escaping Rila's castle in episode 3, the gang's plan was to split up Rila and Silkadoom and to take it to them individually. But let's face it, when Sonic and company got teleported to this dimension, they are either getting their asses beat by Team Silkadoom, or they are getting chased by Team Silkadoom. There is next to no chance of victory if Silkadoom is the anchor and Rila supports him in combat. Now here's where the bad turns into good. Knuckles got cursed in a random RPG encounter, which led Sonic to leave in the group to find an antidote. This event led to Silkadoom chasing after Sonic across the globe. That event left Rila without his babysitter, so he went after Nice because he wanted a Sapphire because he thought Nice was alone with Knuckles. And that event leads Shadow being the reinforcements to Nice because he was nearby Nice and Rila didn't realize this, and they took that to their advantage to take out Riala for good. And that, my friends, is how they got into a bad situation and turned it into a good one. Rila is your standard villain trope. A guy who wants world domination and Sokodoom's morales happen to coincide with his, which explains the team-up. After Knights defeated Riala in Episode 3, Sokodoom was revolted that Riala could barely move, and was considering offing him for being a weakling. Riala most likely had to beg for his life to stay alive. So when Sokodoom ordered him to remain in the castle, that's when the power balance between the two was established. No longer partners. Riala is now second fiddle to Sokodoom. In order to surpass Silkadoom, or at the very least, even the playing field in terms of power levels, Rila needed the Holy Sapphire desperately. And unfortunately for him, the good guys he was fighting showed no mercy. Sonic RPG Episode 8 Preparations are now complete. But it looks like Knights and Knuckles are sending this out because we only see Sonic and Shadow heading for the castle. Overdo it! I know what I heard. Just shut up and let's keep going. Upon arriving at the castle, their target announces he's at the summit waiting for them. Both Sonic and Shadow reach the top in their own fashion. Up here, Hedgehog. So, there you are. arena I chose for our final battle. Quite fitting to determine the superior hedgehog. Don't you agree? 
Let's stop this nonsense and finish this, shall we? Very well. It is so tragically unfair for just the two of you to come against me. But who am I to turn down a death wish? Besides, it will be far more entertaining this way. <laughs> yeah, right. Things won't go the way you think this time, Silkadoom. Tell me, Sonic, do you intend to waste both of our precious times? Or is it that you simply forgot that you could hardly scratch me the last time you used that power? <laughs> Funny, because the way I remember it, this was the very same form that knocked you out the last time we fought. Enough of this. Are we going to fight it all or just make idle chit-chat all day? What have you, Shadow? Have you added anything new to your repertoire? Fight me, Seal Gadoon. And see for yourself. So, you finally decided to join us in the waking world. Uh, uh, my head. Uh, what happened? <laughs> A lot has happened as you slept, my friend. If I didn't miss anything too special. No, I'm afraid not. You have just awoken at the hour of our fate. The final battle is about to begin. So, this is the new power you speak of. I'm not impressed. You will be, Silkadoon. I promise you that. But not for too long. The, the power, power of the Sapphire will blast the longer. So that's why Knights is missing in action. Not only to wait for the holy water to cure Knuckles, he also gave the sapphire to Shadow, so that way he has the power to reach his own super form. And that's kind of sick! Super Sonic and Super Shadow teaming up? But will this power be enough? <laughs> this suspense is simply awful. Come at me! Come at Silkatron! You'll do away! Super Sonic and Super Shadow versus Silkadoon the Hedgehog. Who will be the superior hedgehog? And it's time for an RPG battle. Super Sonic is stronger than ever. He is the more defensive oriented hedgehog for this fight. For his melee attack, he has a Super Sonic Dash where he rams his face into the enemy in classic fashion. For his super skills, Sonic has three of them. Super Sonic Wind! Sonic Adventure 2, baby! White Blast, a.k.a. the Kamehameha Wave. Take this! And Double Blast! The Kamehameha and a Gallic Gun Duo attack, featuring Shadow. For his special skills, Sonic's got three. Sacrificer, aka the Kaioken. Sacrificing your health for a raw, powerful attack. <laughs> healer, which heals you. And Holy Drops, a team healer skill just like in Episode 7. Slightly weaker than Healer, but it heals both hedgehogs. Super Shadow is the more offensive-oriented hedgehog for this fight. Shadow's melee attack is a rushdown of kicks. For his super skills, he's got three of them, and they're quite familiar. Especially if you play Shadow the Hedgehog. Chaos Spear! Chaos Blast! Chaos Blast! And the return of Chaos Control. It's good to be home. For 
Shadow Super Specials, he's got three of them. Royal Shield, Healer, and Absorb. Royal Shield nullifies enemy attacks for one turn. But don't use it. It's a waste of 100 SP. You're better off spamming Chaos Attacks, to be quite honest. Healer! Here's a heal. And Absorb. It's weaker than a melee attack, but you leech off Silkadoom's HP with it. The option is there, I guess. All of Silkadoom's moves are AoE attacks, so he'll constantly be attacking both hedgehogs at the same time. But be wary of Silkadoom's Osmo's attack that saps your SP. Because if you're ever caught under 1800 HP, you're getting blown back by his final explosion attack. Practice my power! <laughs> Supersonic and Super Shadow come with ultimate attacks. Supersonic gets a light speed attack that strikes the enemy at the speed of light. Super Shadow gets a Chaos Controller performance. It strikes the enemy using Chaos Control at full power. really want to dish out some damage. Sonic and Shadow have their own Team Blast. Team Overlimit. At the cost of two overdrive meters. Whoever initiated the attack, the other hedgehog doesn't get their next turn. Also, quick time event for bonus damage. Otherwise, Silkadoom will repel the attack. <laughs> One more Team Blast should do the trick, and too bad it's all over! For you! The following fight cutscene is choreographed super duper well. I love it so much. Shadow and Silkadoom are really going at each other, since the two of them are more tapped in the Chaos techniques. They even fight in Frozen Chaos Control. Then Silkadoom punts Shadow into the roof, and he's not done yet. Silkadoom ignores Sonic completely, and Sonic gives chase. With barely any recovery time, Shadow and Silkadoom continue to clash fists, with Silkadoom on top. And then gets blindsided into a building by Sonic. Even after landing a clean shot, Silkadoom is still nullifying his attacks and TPing everywhere. So it's time for the fastest thing alive to kick it into high gear. And then it's time to kick you! But Silkadoom is not out of the game yet. And it's time to take this fight up the castle walls with Shadow rocketing behind them. I love this episode so much. It's the runner-up for my personal favorite episode in this series. That last cutscene was choreographed so amazingly good! But it's what I imagine a Super Sonic and Super Shadow team-up would look like. Super speedy action until somebody finally falls. 
Shadow here is the more aggressive, reckless fighter, where his only goal is to take down his opponent. When both him and Silkodoom used Chaos Control, it affected Sonic as well, but it didn't matter because Silkodoom had to be stopped at all costs. Sonic is the more reserved and focused fighter, where his moves are more critical and targeted. During the fight, he's charging up a white blast, but he cancels it midway through because he also gets concerned about friendly firing because Shadow happens to get in his way. And how Sonic had to adapt to Silkodoom's TP and strategy, which he got from Shadow's battle DNA, striking him at super light speeds. Adaptability. The beginning of the fight started off as Shadow and Sonic taking turns fighting Silkodoom alone. When all three of them were racing up the castle walls, Shadow's recklessness actually came through for this fight. It threw off Silkodoom's timing because he was also going to hit Sonic, and with quick thinking, both hedgehogs literally were playing ping pong with Silkodoom, turning the tide in battle. And that's when Silkodoom had enough with his arrogance attack. This battle is over. Ha! Shadow! After Shadow got knocked down to the surface, he has a hunch why Silkodoom has unlimited stamina and why he's not going down. With Shadow out of the picture, it just leaves Sonic and Silkodoom all alone. But don't worry guys, Super Sonic managed to KO Silkodoom in Episode 5. Sonic managed to 1v1 him last time and he could do it again. I'm sure he'll- <laughs> Oh no! Sonic RPG Episode 9. This episode took a long time to come out. If my math isn't off, this episode came out five years after the previous one. We start with Shadow the Hedgehog recapping their entire journey. How they got here, and how they're back to square one with a knocked out Sonic the Hedgehog, and a Silk Doom standing on top with no hope left. <laughs> Seems like all your efforts up until now have been for nothing, eh, uh, Shadow. Sonic is down for the count, and only you are left standing. You. You've been playing with us from the very beginning. You had the Chaos Emeralds all along, didn't you? <laughs> for someone who excels in the manipulation and perception of Chaos Energy, it's a shame you didn't notice that right from the start. I was cruel to them, remember? Why should I just leave them lying around after I woke up in that damn machine? Now, before I'm done with you, despair for the fact that you fools ever thought to defy me. And there it is. The reason why Silkodoom is invincible is because he had the Chaos Emeralds all along. Before everyone got teleported into this dimension, he snatched the Emeralds, and he never utilized their power until Episode 8, which explains why Super Sonic and Shadow were almost on the verge of defeating him back in Episode 3. I guess Silkadoom wanted to beat them without the Emeralds' power, and it would be far more entertaining that way. But Silkadoom is dead set on winning now, once and for all. Eggman, you have something to do with Sonic's disappearance, don't you? Answer me! They are not on Mobius. What? What do you mean? I sent them to another dimension. No, it can't be. Well, it's not looking good for Eggman, I'll tell you that much. Even after Silkodoom revealed his trump cards, all seven of them, that did not stop Knuckles and Knights from joining the fight. One more push. However, Silkodoom tells them there's no strength in numbers, but they happen to disagree. <laughs> you lot. Do you truly think you can make a difference? Very well. Come, I'll carve upon your flesh just how hopeless the very thought of defeating me really is. What did you say? 
I'll punch that conceited attitude back on you! Knuckles, no! Wait! Oh. Die. You know what? They at least get a gold star for trying. I'll give him that much. What now, Shadow? Shall you remain cowering down there even in your final moments? <laughs> Welp, I guess everyone dies now. At least Shadow went out swinging. With the Chaos Emeralds in play, they never stood any chance at all. Hey, what? What's this? And that's the end of the episode. This one took a long time to come out, and I can see why. We transition back from sprite animations to drawing animations, and the latter takes much more time to make. An advantage sprite animations have is that they have sprite sheets that already exist, and advanced Sonic sprite sheets are all over the place. However, I did like the series more back when it did have sprites, because not only that's my preference, it brought all of the intensity as well. Don't get me wrong, the shots for episode 9 are perfectly fine, and the characters look great in fact, but everyone gets more stiff, and we don't get full body shots either of all the characters, and I understand why. It also makes the fight scenes a lot less thrilling, and I've watched a lot of Sonic X in my day, so I do recognize a lot of shots too. Not only that, this episode was really short as well, and the series didn't conclude here, which I thought it would, so it did end up being a bit disappointing. But, a hypersonic appearance is extremely hype, though. There's one more thing this episode is missing. And what could that be? Oh, that's right, the RPG! Because this episode was entirely cutscenes and no gameplay whatsoever. Well, one year later, Episode 9 gets another release, but instead of the movie version, it's the game version. The plot is the exact same, except this time, there's combat. Super Shadow. Knights and Knuckles versus Silkadoom in gameplay. And the rules on the battlefield are looking a bit different this time. This battle system is in real time 
where you can move around with the arrow keys and buttons dedicated to attacks and different battle strategies. The best comparison I can think of of the battle system is Adventure Quest Worlds, aka AQ Worlds, a game I've played a lot in my junior high days. The concept is very neat, but this game murders Flash. Most of the footage in this video is from my own channel, meaning I haven't played any of these episodes we've covered thus far in this video since their original air date on YouTube, which is 2013 to 2014. So I'm going purely off of memory here. My computer wasn't the greatest either back then, so when I played the game, it looked like my computer screen was in pure agony. Again, I can see all the effort put into this fight, but jeez louise, Flash just couldn't keep up with this intensity. So I honestly have not much else to say. Years go by. With no sign of a finale episode, time is running out since Flash is doomed to die by 2021. But, on December 26 of 2020, Sonic RPG makes a fashionably late appearance of Episode 10. With the power of Midnight Marin, the teamwork of multiple collaborators, and the undying hope from fans across the web, wishes are eternal. Sonic RPG Episode 10. The episode resumes from Episode 8, when Silkadoom punched Sonic out of his super form. Since Shadow also got knocked out of his super form, he lost his held item. The Holy Sapphire. But with despair comes opportunity. <laughs> Stage One. Moonlit Rumble. Everyone's hope lies within Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's do it to it! This isn't your traditional RPG turn-based battle. It's a battle of speed and quick wits. And you better get your act together quickly, or you're never leaving this dimension alive. No! Much bravado for absolutely nothing. V, Chaos Gauge, is a meter which lets you perform actions in this fight. It fills up automatically, and the more gauges you have, the more options you have for combat. Hypersonic gains access to three different drives, and we'll start with the Mighty Drive. A permanent increase to your defensive abilities by 30%! And you also slowly regenerate health as the fight goes on. A handy skill to have if you like to use a Kaioken! Now that we have equipped the drive, it's time to ride or die. Hypersonic's melee attack with zero drawbacks. Hypersonic Wind! Azure Blast! My Hyper Heaven! And Berserker, aka the Kaioken Times 2! But, here comes Hypersonic's limit breaking move. His special attack combined with the Holy Sapphire. You get Light Speed Judgment! And what can I say? This move is out of this world. With it, you can take the fight to Silkadoom on the moon! That is so awesome. But we're not done with you yet, Silkadoom, because we're going right back! Hypersonic style! For stage one, we get a level up, and we gain some secondary effects for our attack skills. <laughs> It's 
completely one-sided. Sukadun just can't keep up with that speed. <laughs> Your speed is truly astonishing. I'm impressed. But that speed means nothing when your fists lack the power to phase me. Besides, that power of yours won't last much longer. <laughs> See? Even your speed begins to betray you. So much for being the fastest thing alive. <laughs> Stage 2. Starlight Hallway. Silkudim is trying to hide it, but his stamina is definitely wearing down. Part 2 of this battle goes on in breakneck speeds in these long corridors of Rila's castle. Don't blink, because if you do, you may never wake up to see the next sunrise. Uh. Our next option is the Knuckle Drive. It permanently increases your offensive abilities by 30%! A passive that heavily complements utilizing your offensive special skills. Hypersonic's basic melee attack. Sonic Whirlwind. Knuckle Multi-Punch. Surge of Might. Sonic Whirlwind will increase the speed of the Chaos Gauge by 30% until your next move. It will not stack with the Sonic Drive. Knuckle Multi-Punch will increase your offense by 30% until your next move. And Surge of Might will increase your defense by 30% until your next move. Those are the new passive skills for Hypersonic, which he gained after Stage 1. And... Let's not forget about Berserker, the Kaioken times three! You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do! Strange, isn't it? And Hypersonic's Limit Drive. Light speed judgment just got flashier. Try to keep up, Silkadoom! For stage 2, we get another level up, and our skills have also powered up. single moment when Silkadun showed the emeralds, he harnessed that power for his own. And with the sapphire, he enhanced that to reach yet another level. Incredible. Stop running from me! You... Oh, 
crush all of you. Damn it, I knew it. That much power won't be enough as long as that bastard is the one holding the emeralds. Stage 3, Nebulous Melancholia. Silk Doom got backed into a corner. He is now using all seven Chaos Emeralds at their maximum, which granted him his own super form. Apex Silk Doom is fighting at 100%, and if you show any sign of weakness, your life is forfeit. <laughs> What an idiot. His death was well deserved. The Sonic Drive permanently increases the speed of your Chaos Gauge by 30% and gain regeneration of the Sapphire much faster. This drive means you'll be shooting off attacks much faster than the other two drives. Not only that, we have the Holy Sapphire as another mechanic. In fact, it comes into play with Sonic's Light Speed Judgment, where it needs to be at 100% with three Chaos Gauges. The Sapphire naturally charges up, but the Sonic Drive gives it a Sonic Boost, making your fighting style the most unique of the three. Sonic has two other limit skills that I haven't mentioned yet, but are present in all three stages. Healer which heals 70% of your maximum HP. And Restoration. It takes 30% of the Sapphire's power, but in exchange you get 30% of your HP and SP back. So, it's a nice pseudo alternative for the Mighty and Knuckle Drive if you're in a pinch. But, you can swap through drives if the situation depends on it. Hypersonic's melee attack gets soaked up by Apex Silk Doom's shield, but you still deal some damage. Hypersonic skills have gone further beyond. Blindside Basher! Sky Pierce Bolts! And Threefold Devastation. A reminder. The secondary effects don't stack if they match the current drive you have equipped. So, you want to utilize the other two moves that don't match your drive to take advantage of as many passive effects as possible. And let's not forget, Berserker at Kaioken times 4! <laughs> Apex Silkadoom ain't super just for show. He too can access the Chaos Drives. Speed, attack, and defense. Hypersonics limit drive. Light speed judgment is here to go all out at its absolute maximum. Apex Silk Doom's Days of Terror winding down. He still has his signature move, but now it's wielded with the power of the Chaos Emeralds, and things just got a whole lot scarier. Face Oblivion. Osmos, the move that saps away opponents' MP and SP, has now evolved to planet devastating levels. As his theme plays in the background, he is draining everything. From your HP to your SP, all of it is getting sapped away and it's a race against the clock. I screamed when he first did this to me. With every passing second, your vitality is slowly fading away. What drive do you use? Sonic Drive to preserve the Sapphire to keep your heals up? The Knuckle Drive to stop the SP bleeding? Or maybe the Mighty Drive to stop the HP bleeding? All of this is going down while Silkadoom keeps pounding away at your flesh. Well, we have one more drive that Silkadoom doesn't. Because we are hypersonic, 
we have access to the Hyper Drive at the cost of the Holy Sapphire at 100% and three Chaos Gauges. Sonic the Hedgehog truly goes hyper. Sonic, Knuckle, and Mighty all fused into one. The maximum speed of the Chaos Gauge, along with HP and SP coursing through your body. You can start swinging back. The Hyper Drive is available in all three phases, so it's up to you whenever you prefer light speed or hyper mode. But be wary of the hyper mode, because once that power wears down, you're back to no drive, so you need to stock up on another one. But I think it's time to wrap this up. All of our friends are waiting for us on his world, and this tyrant has to be stopped. Sayonara, Silkadoom the Hedgehog. Do something. Those two are long gone too. Shadow, get back! Wake up Knuckles and tell him to use the sapphire. He'll know what to do. What? Just do what I say! Gah! Wake up, you useless moron! Wake up! Who's that? What... what is this? Is this the Master Emerald? What did you say? The stone. It radiates the same energy as the Master Emerald. If by chance it has the same properties of it... It can also stop the Chaos Emeralds. Exactly! Dang! This guy is tough. I just hope I can hold off long enough. <laughs> this dimension shall be mine. The servants are the seven chaos. Is it over? It seems like it. At last. I can't believe it! You guys really did it! How could you use a sapphire like that? Well, to be honest, it was a lucky guess. That moment when I used the sapphire to go hyper, I realized it had the same properties as the Master Emerald back in our dimension. So, I had Knuckles test it out. Great job, Nux! Oh, 
Oh, well, you know, it's this talent of mine that... Hey! Don't turn your back on people when they're talking to you! Well, now stands another problem. We still don't know how to get back. I guess that's not a problem anymore. Since this stone works the same way as the Master Emerald, and we've got the Chaos Emeralds back, I can just link this stone to the Emerald back home and make a massive Chaos Control. What? Really? That's awesome! But first, let's finish this abomination off. Stop it, Chad. There's no need to go that far. What? Do you have any idea what it means if he lives? There's no need to worry. He doesn't have the emeralds anymore. Besides, if he turns out to be that bad, we'll just have to knock him over again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Just don't come to regret it later. Okay, guys, all set. Let's head home. Knights, thank you for everything. You have a big empire to rule now. You take care of it. You have my gratitude, Sonic. For everything. Have a safe trip home! Chaos Control! No! It can't be! Sonic will never be coming back! <laughs> All right, it worked. <laughs> it's good to be home. Sonic, you are back. Sonic! Uh, Amy? <laughs> oh, you idiot. I thought I was never going to be able to see you again. Yeah, I'm home now. Oh, you guys are all back. How fortunate. <laughs> and uh, you brought him back too? He is your responsibility now, and with him, it ends this experiment of yours. Don't make me come after you. Oh, and Doctor, I'll be taking this one. I call it. It is of no use to you. Well, I think it's all settled then. I'll be taking this emerald back to the island. All right. Now that we're all together, we should go home and make a big party. All right, Sonic. Sonic? Sonic? Not again! Hey, Sonic, where are you going? Going to where I started. To my long way to vacation on the beach. The end. And man, does it feel good saying that. Episode 10 was phenomenal. I do remember covering Episode 10's demo back in 2019, but I didn't remember much of it. So seeing this final product and playing it was so much fun. I really enjoyed the three RPG fights. I thought we were just getting one. The chaos gauge and drive mechanic keeps you on edge the entire time, because you'll never know when Silkadoom will strike you next. Sometimes the dastard cheats and will attack twice. The three different drives gives you different fighting styles and conditions to work with, and it's just so much fun. Episode 10's RPG system was inspired by Panzer Dragoon Saga. I've never played the game before, but that's what the Sonic RPG Twitter says. More games should explore the style of combat, seriously. I was sad when Episode 9 the movie was strictly the drawn animations, but Episode 10 we got a nice hybrid. All the cutscenes stick to the drawn out animations, and the RPG fights stuck to the sprite animations, and I am A-OK -okay with that. Especially since the sprite animations for every, and I mean every attack, has so much heart to them. I love the light speed dash, and I love the light speed attack from the adventure games. So anytime they get referenced in any way, shape, or form in Sonic's arsenal, and whatever what form of media it may be, I just fanboy. Hypersonic's level 2 light speed judgment. Hypersonic looks so feral. I love it when the good guys get so untamed and ferocious. Animalistic. Silk Doom's body just slams and rebounds off the floor like a basketball. And Sonic just slams him again! And the level 3, light speed judgment. When Sonic winds back his punch and you hear the Smash Bros sound effect, that got me so hype! Hypersonic and Silk Doom going at it so fast and so fiercely. I can watch these animations all day. Just them soaring through the clouds. I think stage 2 is my personal favorite phase of the episode fight because I'm a big fan of high speed chases and fights. 
And that's basically what that is. And was the Sonic OVA and Sonic Rush reference here intentional? Even if it wasn't, I'll say it was. It actually caught me off guard the first time I played that stage, because I strictly use my mouse to choose actions and not the arrow keys. So when I noticed that, I started to panic immediately. But the rush was so much fun! Silkadoom has such a sinister and badass voice. Him talking smack to you the entire time. I love it when villains get cocky and witty when they have the brawn to back it up. Not only is it a physical fight, but also an egotistical fight as well. The three game over screens have so much personality and attention to detail in them. In the first stage, when you run out of health, Sonic powers down. Silkadoom gets all excited. It's free real estate, baby! As he watches Sonic's lifeless body fall to his doom with a sinister smile. He knew Sonic's power-up was temporary, and his victory was inevitable. In Stage 2's Game Over screen, Hyper Sonic just can't keep up with the pace, tumbles and crashes into the floor in his base form. At this point in the fight, Silkodoom has given it all he's got in his base form, since Hyper Sonic proved to be an actual threat to him. Which is why he doesn't waste a single opportunity to sucker punch Sonic in his blind spot, kick the absolute life out of him, and send him blasting off into the stratosphere just to blow his body up into smithereens while also evilly posing just like he's got the sweetest S rank in a Sonic video game. And I love that Sonic battle pose. In Stage 3's Game Over screen, when Sonic is struggling to stay in his hyper form, Apex Silkadoom knows it's time for him to die. He constantly wails on Sonic's guts, grabs him by the face, and begins to choke slam him towards the surface while charging an energy ball at point blank range. Waits for the second he powers down, then ends his life while making the cheekiest pose. Bruh, Silkadoom, you are a badass. All of his attacks are just spectacular to watch. The home attack, suplexing Sonic into a table. Wait, there aren't any tables here. I get used to that saying way too much. Suplexing him into the floor and using his own version of Chaos Control. Bravo, man. Bruh. Freaking. Bo. I think my only issue in this fight is the UI for the Sapphire. The Sapphire looks so pretty in that sprite animation. It's so... You just can't look away from it. It's so beautiful. There's a number encarved in the gemstone, but it's really hard to see it. So it's hard to gauge what number you're currently at, aside from looking at the actual Sapphire fill meter. The cutscene after Stage 3 is interesting. It does make sense that the Sapphire has similar properties to the Master Emerald. The Sapphire did have a Guardian after all. I wonder what happened to that guy. Rystar, Restar, whatever his face? I'm quite shocked that the Guardian never came after Knights at any point during the story to get his gemstone back. Unless that one shot Rila did in Episode 2 actually killed him. Oh. Having Knuckles use a Sapphire to power down Apex Silkadoom was great! And everyone helped until the very, very end. Sonic manages to put two and two together, Shadow got Knuckles a gemstone, Knuckles performed the right, and Knights distract Silkadoom enough with Hypersonic to get the job done. And I won't lie to you, I'm actually quite shocked they let Silkadoom live. And I'm even more shocked Hyper Sonic's final freaking flash didn't vaporize him, honestly. Sonic didn't make a good point, however, that the emeralds were what made Silkadoom so deadly. That's the information that nobody knew beforehand because it was never confirmed Silkadoom did have the Chaos Emeralds, but it was heavily hinted because Eggman couldn't find them in his death egg, but the Master Emerald was there. But will this bite them in the butt in the end? Sonic letting Silkadoom live? Well, we'll never know because this is the finale. The official finale. Midnight Marin and Friends said they are no longer working on episodes. No more sequels. No remakes. This is the end. And I don't blame them. They seriously went all out on this project. With the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Shadow uses Chaos Control to warp himself, Sonic, Knuckles, and Silkadoom back home to Mobius. Tails and Amy can finally sleep at night knowing the blue blur is back. Knuckles got his precious emerald back. Shadow ditches Silkodoom onto Eggman and skedaddles with his precious chaos emerald. And Sonic is going back to the beach to enjoy his vacation. 
and ending, I approve. Before I get into final thoughts, we must talk about Super Sonic. In an earlier version of Episode 3, which I did not record because this was before my time <laughs> on YouTube, we do get an explanation on how Sonic gets access to his super form. After Sonic, Knights, and Knuckles find a cave to stay in, Shadow gets angry on how Sonic can transform when the Chaos Emeralds aren't even here. Shadow the Hedgehog kept trying to power up on his own, but to no avail. Then he gets Sonic to spill the beans for him. So, the explanation is, one time, Eggman stole the Master Emerald from the Hidden Palace Zone. Sonic decided to take it back, but Eggman made a trap for him. Eggman built a weapon that uses the energy of the Emerald, and he shot a beam of Chaos Energy at Sonic the Hedgehog. Instead of getting killed by the beam, he absorbed the energy, granting him the ability to transform at any time. The grammar from that earlier episode was really bad, from what I've read. So from that summary alone, you're not missing out on much. Overall, Sonic RPG was a good time. Again, I enjoyed sprite animation so much when I was younger, and I loved playing Flash games through my video game characters, so Sonic RPG happened to be one of them. The RPG battles for the later half of the series was great. And once again, Silkadoom the Hedgehog has to be my favorite Sonic OC of all time. Even his super form, Apex Silkadoom, is so well crafted. And that episode 10 finale? Breathtaking. In the fourth stage with the quick time events, it plays Apex of the World from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And that theme is pretty fire. Good choice if I do say so myself. And a big congrats to the series in general. Because I know Midnight Marin went through some lifetime events which took away time from the series, but Sonic RPG 10 managed to get completed before Flash died in just a few days. A lot of fan made projects never see the end, so major props to you and everyone else on the team who happened to join along the way. Since Flash is gone, it will be harder to play the episodes now, but I know episode 10 is on Game Jolt, which I highly recommend playing if you haven't already. This will be my final video on the Sonic RPG series. I know the series is left ambiguous, meaning other fans can pick up the story from here and continue another storyline, because again, Silkadoom the Hedgehog is not dead. He's with Eggman, and Sonic and Co, they went to go do their own thing. So it has sequel potential. In 2021, there are people on this platform who still think, for some reason, that I created this Sonic RPG series. Just because I happened to make a YouTube playthrough on it. My name is nowhere on the credits from episode 1 to 9 at all. And yes, you could argue that you see my name in the credits in episode 10, but that's just in a special thanks. This series was created by Midnight Marin and Acid Shiver. So from my perspective, if there are any sequel games that do come out, which is fan made by somebody completely different, I won't cover it so I don't spread any unintentional misinformation. And quite frankly, the series ended on such a good note, so I'm perfectly fine ending it here. The 15 year nostalgia trip. Thank you, Sonic RPG. And thank you all for watching, and sayonara. <laughs>